Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are nearing the end of Carnage Week, and I thought, what would be better than ending this week with some Carnage Rain stuff? So we have the next three episodes, we're going to talk about Carnage Rains in this one and the next episode, but then in the third episode, we're going to talk about the Web of Carnage that came out, the one shot that recently came out. So we'll cover everything, and I'm not going to do a breakdown fully of this. I'm just going to kind of give you my thoughts overall on each issue while talking about certain moments because we are going to do a roundtable discussion of Carnage Reigns, and I'm going to have some guests on, and we're going to just kind of dissect it that way and get everyone's opinion on certain things. So for now, I'm just going to tell you about a, a few scenes that I liked, a few that I didn't, and I'm not going to do a full breakdown like I normally do, and I'll try to avoid some spoilers, but we are going to get into some minor ones for sure. But I'll try to avoid some of the cliffhangers if I can, except for the final issue in this one, part four. I am thinking I'm going to talk about the the cliffhanger at the end of this one because it's interesting as an x-men fan i found it interesting so carnage rain started with this issue here alpha which is one of the covers i was hoping to get all the connecting ones but every week when i went back in they were sold out so i had to buy the other ones but that's okay because i love this cover a lot it's it's very intense that cover um but this issue carnage rains is broken up into chapters you have like flashback stories and then you have the main story and this picks up right where carnage 12 ended you have Miles swinging through the city, you know, narrating and talking about, you know, what he went through in Absolute Carnage and everything like that. And there's this gorgeous artwork. I love this spread here. Todd's Diner down here. Um, they did a really good job on this book. Actually, I really love this first issue. It did a great job setting everything up and then also continuing what we saw in, you know, in issue 12 of Carnage. So um, with this, Miles is like, look, this guy is the worst. Carnage is... You know, like, I'm scared. I really legitimately am scared. My parents are moving into a new apartment right now because this villain named Rubble, I think, or someone, or they uh, they destroyed, you know, Miles' former apartment when they went looking for his family to kill them. Luckily, Miles stopped the guy and everything, but, you know, now we have them moving, and it's moving day, and Miles isn't there to help his parents because he has to go and chase down this serial killer uh, who, you know, Genki told him about. Genki was watching this... YouTube streamer, this online streamer, who ended up going into the St. Estes, you know, which we saw on one of the Carnage issues. So that was cool that that was tied to that. And Genki was a fan of that guy on online and on YouTube, and that guy went missing. So Miles is on the case. He went to St. Estes first, and now he's followed the police chatter to Todd's diner, and that's where he's going to battle Carnage here. And when he goes in, everything seems normal, and you know, but of course, nothing's ever normal now that you have a Carnage Cletus hybrid that has an Iron Man suit and an arc reactor in him. Um, so he's part of Extremis as well, and he's kind of a dragon from the Null Dragons. Like, this is a hybrid creature thing that, you know, is unpredictable and can create, you know, hallucinations, kind of. He's really just spreading out his symbiote to make everything look like it's normal, but obviously nothing is normal. So right off the bat, you know, Miles gets bit in the shoulder, and he's weakened through most of this, which I like because he's already kind of an underdog in this battle. But he, he gets, he's even lowered now because he has a major shoulder injury, so he can't throw punches as hard. He's right-handed, so he's kind of a little out of the battle here. But lucky for him, he's not fighting this battle alone because this Agent Gal lady shows up and she releases the Scorpion. And I like that too because Scorpion has a connection to Miles and also with Carnage as well, uh, being that his codex was ripped out and Miles tried to save him before Carnage took over Miles back in the, you know, absolute Carnage storyline. So Max sees an opportunity here to get some revenge. He doesn't like Cletus Cassidy. He doesn't like Spider-Man. Um, but this is a, a government agency coming to him and saying, hey, we're starting a new group uh, called the Cape Killers. And so we want you to go out there and destroy some, maybe some good guys if they get out of line, but some bad guys. And in doing so, they're kind of like the Suicide Squad. We'll shave time off of your sentence, you know, your life sentence. So, uh, so that's what's happening. And like I said, while all that's going on, Miles' family is moving, and they're trying their best. They're moving at night, which is, I mean, I guess you got to move when you got to move. You know, it's, it's, if it's an emergency, you got to get out of an apartment quickly. But uh, Miles says, yeah, we found another apartment. It's smaller, but it's going to work. I'm going to share a bedroom with my, my baby sister. So, uh, so that'll probably cause some fun drama in his main book, who I think Cody's doing a great job in the main Miles book. I have been reading it. I didn't want to cover it on here because it didn't fully set up anything Carnage Reigns wise, but it's still a really good book and I highly recommend you go check it out. I think Cody's doing a really good job and so is the art team on that book. Um, so it's good to see them shine a little bit here and be part of this crossover where you have Kenneth, you got John Shade, you got all these characters coming in and, uh, and battling each other, you know, and fighting for the fate of the world. But also Cletus here, who's just going, you know, absolutely crazy. 
and just wants to rain terror and spread the you know the fear of Cletus Cassidy once again. And Kenneth even says he goes, I was hoping to just stir him up and sick him on Carnage and you know help you know have Cletus destroy Carnage because I think he's the only one who could and that might save the universe. But instead, I just created Cletus Cassidy again. And now he's just going around causing more carnage, <laughs> you know, so that's pretty much what's happening. So Mac is all too happy to jump in and help out and try to take down Cletus. Uh, but it doesn't go well for him. It doesn't go well for Miles. And a big battle ensues in this issue. And almost everyone is left for dead at the end. It's it's actually a big explosion goes off. The arc reactor inside Cletus goes off. And there's a great moment I love here where Cletus is like, wait a minute. He's inside his mind. And he goes, wait what's an arc reactor and then it blows up <laughs> so uh so yeah so that's where the first issue ends um they also changed the name to cletus's clubhouse which i love that in the letters column um but here they have these flashback stories you see how scorpion gets you know recruited into this team by gal so that's a cool little backup story that i don't want to spoil too much of but has some great moments in there and, and mac is a character that i like i like mac gargan he's just a neat character not always has you know have they done cool stuff with him but i didn't mind him too much as venom although it was like a very different take on venom but that's kind of the point um but him being this like crying sniveling worm that the suit was like constantly intimidating and, and bullying i kind of liked that take i thought it was scary it added to like some fear moments in that way uh, but then ever since mac has kind of been back as scorpion over the last couple of years i felt like him stepping up and doing things has been fun and him doing this you know being part of this kind of suicide squad team cape killers is neat too i like it so he's not really a good guy he's just trying to shave time off of his life sentence so i like that uh, and then meanwhile there's a great flashback story also in this alpha issue that talks about the first time miles came back after absolute carnage when he was you know after he got the suit removed from him and he's talking to his dad and he's like this is the worst i've ever fought this carnage guy he got in my head he showed me how good it would feel if I use my powers to kill people, and I'm afraid I'm going to I'm gonna do that one day. And his dad's like, no, 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 you're my son. No monster gets to tell you who you are. You're my son, and you're going to be just like me. And he's like, I save lives. You save lives. Your mother saves lives. You know, he's like, so that's who you are. So I really dug that. I thought that was a cool short story as well. And then the book ends with one more uh, story with going back again to the, the whole original Maximum Carnage storyline, where Gal loses her partner during the original Maximum Carnage and why she's gotten involved in the government since then and why she's leading this strike force against Cletus and why it's personal for her. So all these are really cool. I thought it made the issue really great and it's a great way to kick off the Summer of Symbiotes, which are another bunch of connecting covers that I think I missed out on, unfortunately. But yeah, really cool. So this alpha issue I really dug and I thought it set this event up really well and that continues into these next issues where we pretty much just have like a, a kind of a Peter Parker moment with Miles where that, you know, old Spider-Man comic where, you know, Peter is trying to lift up the, the wreckage, the, the building is caving in on him. He's trying to lift it up. Miles has that moment in this issue with Mac Gargan. So he has to lift it up to save him and Mac. And then he does lift it up enough for Mac to kind of slither out. And then Mac's going to leave him behind. And, you know, and it's so there's some tension there. But I really dug it. And I think they pulled this off really, really well. I love the artwork on this book too. And I thought this was a neat story because it's it's Mac and you know and, and Miles having to trust each other. And there's not a lot of trust there, but Miles is so quick to trust Mac, and Mac is just not really into it. But he starts to warm up to the kid as they go around picking up survivors and he, and on their way up to back to the street level, because obviously the building caved in on them after the explosion of the arc reactor and they're like, every time they pick up a new survivor, they're like, is this another Cletus? Is this a carnage? And Miles is trying to use his, you know, spidey sense, but it's it's not really working. So he's like, uh, I, I think we're okay. Let's just get these people to safety. And obviously that does backfire. Someone in the group is not who they say they are. And I won't spoil who and stuff, but it's really, really fun. And like I said, the artwork and the splash pages are fantastic in this. They do a good job. And there's some times where Miles uses his brain and he's like, hey, if we do this, it's it, it's, it might drown us. But there's a much better chance that it'll help us get out of here. And so, it, and everyone's like, dude, you're you're crazy. And even, you know, Scorpion's like, dude, I, I don't want to do this. And Miles' like, it's okay. It's going to be okay, Mac, you know. And uh, I love that. I thought that was awesome. But also in this issue, you find out who some of the other members of the Cape Killers are. So I don't want to spoil that either. But we might in the next episode when we talk about them more. But we start to see Mac's teammates on this uh, group of his and it's they're deadly <laughs> especially one of them 
very deadly. So, uh, so yeah, so that's where that issue ends as the new team shows up and it goes into Carnage number 13 here. So we had Miles number six there, Carnage 13 here, and it's going to end in Red Goblin number five. But in this one, we have Carnage and Kenneth, or Cletus and Kenneth. It's a big issue focusing on them while still peppering in the Miles stuff and the Scorpion stuff. But I, what I like is this is really well paced. I got to say for normally these crossover events, I always get nervous because I, I'm worried that one of the you know editors isn't going to pay attention to some of the details or the artists aren't going to communicate or the writers aren't going to communicate. But I feel like this book has a lot of communication in it. I, I feel at least. Um, and it's it shows in the in the execution. Uh, this has a couple little hiccups. There's a moment uh, where I think uh, Kenneth gets uh, you know gets possessed by a Carnage symbiote, and we'll get into that because I think that's in the fourth issue. So there's a minor like continuity error I think in the art in that one, but otherwise the book is is pretty good as far as that kind of stuff goes. Because I know I always nitpick and harp on that stuff, but I thought they did a good job in this. So in this issue, Cletus. And now that he's licking his wounds, the arc reactor is cracked. It exploded, but it could go off again. It you know it could be a, a numerous you know bombs kind of going off in him. So he needs it fixed. So he goes to Stark Enterprises and he takes Kenneth with him. And they go they break in and they're like, "Where's Tony Stark? He needs to fix me." And they're like, "Tony Stark doesn't run this business anymore. It's it's a new guy that runs it." And Tony's like out there you know being Iron Man doing other things, so he doesn't run this company anymore. And so Cletus is like, fine, so you nerds are going to help me. You're going to put this Sentinel Iron Man design that you're working on, you're going to bond me to it, and you're going to work it into my you know, veins, and you're going to work my veins into the wiring, and we're, you're going to you know, improve me and make me better. And so uh, so where he got the, that idea from, I have no idea. Um, but he did, and he's doing it, so that's what's happening. But while he's under you know, getting operated on, he needs someone to watch his back, and he doesn't really trust Kenneth. So he gives Kenneth a symbiote with some gear that's lying around the Stark Tech office. but And Kenneth gets all excited. He's like, yay, finally, I'm going to have a power and maybe I can do some, you know, I can go stop Carnage or something. But no, you know, of course, Cletus isn't going to give him full control. So he takes over and Kenneth is now just a meat puppet in this half Iron Man suit, half, uh, you know, um, you know, Carnage symbiote thing that's uh, kind of put together by Cletus before he went under. So now Cletus is talking through Kenneth. And he's trying to stop Scorpion and the Cape Killers who show up to try to stop him and kill Cletus. So, uh, but while they're doing this, there's a, they make a point here where Kenneth, his right hand, at least in this image, maybe it's wrong, maybe it was flipped or something like that, but in this image, Kenneth's right hand is the one that was cut off. And then, when, and then again here, when it's, he's bonding to the symbiote, it creates a right hand for him. But in this page, his left hand gets cut off. And I'm because that's the, the one that's hooked up to the, the gun, the gauntlet, as you see. There's a gauntlet on like a wristband on each hand, but that's the gauntlet. That's the full on gauntlet on his left arm. So that hand gets cut off, and then Cletus says, Hey, you didn't get the one up on him. That's his already amputated hand. And I'm like, Wait, I thought his right hand was amputated. Why is the left hand being cut off? How is that the amputated hand? So I think, I don't know if the art was flipped on one of those pages or what, but it seems like that was a continuity error. So. Anyway, so yeah, so you have Scorpion here, uh, the female Electra, she sh or Electro, she shows up and uh, and they're fighting the, the Cape Killers. I'm trying to hide at least some of the members of the team so you don't see everybody. But in this, uh, the book ends with them all just piling on to Cletus, uh, but not before he's able to hack into everything. Now that he's part of the wires, because remember there was a time in the 90s where Cletus Cassidy actually went through phone lines and went through the internet, and that's what's happening here. He goes and bonds to this Sentinel robot thing, and it connects him to the entire, you know, Stark Tech building, the Stark Core building. And so now that he can tap in anything, he's sending signals out on people's cell phones, anyone who has a Stark Tech phone, um, because he's like makes Apple products and stuff in this world, and because uh, why wouldn't he? Um, and so anyone who has one of his phones, they're getting the message, and they're... Uh, a symbiote sliver is going into their brains when they put the phone to their head. So that's what happens at the end of this is that, you know, New York is taken over by Carnage once again. And lastly, we're going to talk about Carnage Reigns Part 4 of 7, uh, which is in Red Goblin number 5. This is where we're going to end for tonight, but the next episode we're going to talk about Parts 5, 6, and the Omega issue where it all ends. So we'll get into that. But this is where it kind of kicks into high gear here. Uh, Alex and Jan come back. So I was wrong. Jan does do the art on this tie-in issue, and I'm so glad because the art's amazing. 
But in this one, you have, you know, these people online that are carnage fanatics, some that are just, you know, people that live in basements, you know, like kind of the, the online trope. But then there's some that are like married people that, you know, do this on the side where they go on and look for carnage murders online and they're kind of fanatics of his. And it gets really creepy and a lot of these guys start getting these emails and getting these phone calls where they, you know, the symbiote goes into their brain and starts infecting all of them, including Stan, who is Normie's little brother. Um, he gets a phone call that was meant for Liz Allen, uh, but instead, you know, he takes the phone call and it infects him. And then he goes and pulls a Cletus Cassidy and tries to kill his own mother. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, this is where it gets dark. But luckily, Normie stops him without, you know, Liz finding out beats him up, you know, uh, knocks him out, uh, puts him in a broom closet somewhere, and is like, okay, he'll be out for a little bit, uh, you know, even though he's still possessed. And then my mom, she doesn't know what's going on, and she usually, you know, takes a while when she's decompressing, taking a bath for like an hour or two. He's like, so I got some time to go out and try to figure out what's going on in this city and why Carnage is infecting people and, and getting out there and spreading like this. And so he, you know, goes and joins the battle. And, uh, and meanwhile, you know, we have the team, the Cape Killers, you have Scorpion and, and Miles and everyone who are out there fighting the good fight. Uh, but it's, they're losing badly. I mean, this moment right here sums it up right here. It's really dark. One pedestrian stabs another and then laughs at him. And then this pedestrian starts laughing back, takes the knife out and stabs the first guy. And that's what, it, what I mean. Like, it just starts getting nuts and bonkers and really pushes that uh, pg-13 rating i think because it's it's twisted stuff so gal is freaking out her team is losing and she's asking for backup and she calls the person the guy who runs you know stark to enterprises now and he's like she's like i need backup right now and he's like look i'm already sending backup so you know be prepared they're showing up soon and she's like they and he's like yes they so uh, she's like please tell me it's the avengers uh but unfortunately it's not the avengers but red goblin does show up in the meantime and buy them some time until the backup will arrive at the end of the issue. And when he shows up, you know, you have Miles here who's like, wait a minute, what are you? And he's like, I don't know, what are you? And he's like, well, I'm Spider-Man. He's like, okay, well, I'm Red Goblin, I guess. Or he's like, he doesn't really have a name. He's like, I'm trying to figure out what I am, and uh, I'm trying to do good. And he's like, okay, so we're not going to fight? And he's like, no, we're not going to fight. I'm here to help you. And, and it's a good thing he says that because right then and there, that's when Kenneth shows up in that makeshift armor that carnage made for him because obviously cletus is hooked into the building and hooked into that giant sentinel thing uh, that stark made and so this is the kenneth drone uh, like drone i guess or you know whatever and he's out there causing damage in cletus's place um buying cletus time to complete his you know integration and stuff so everyone's trying to deal with this version and uh and kenneth is like get me out of here like I i'm i'm kenneth i'm a serial killer i'm not a good person but this is pure evil, and I, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Can you break me free? And that's what they do. They, they actually rip the symbiote off of Kenneth, and Red Goblin eats it. Like, full-on eats it. Like, let there be carnage ending of the movie eats it. Like, uh, you know, when Venom ate carnage in the comic book eats it, he devours this symbiote and integrates it into himself and, I guess, purges and cleans it. So, yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> so the carnage does not like that. Cletus is very unhappy. And he's like, don't take my stuff. You know, that was Kenneth. You got Kenneth and you took away one of my symbiotes. Um, but like I said, at this point, it, the battle is they're losing it. Like, everyone's getting taken down. You know, the Cape Killers are even losing. They're not putting up a big fight. And that's when we're going to end here with a giant reveal of two more Stark Sentinels showing up to help even the odds. So to see Stark have the Sentinel program kind of thing going here. It's like, I get it, he, you know, that's Stark's way. He's always like, we got to improve things and do better and protect the world. But I feel like this still does send like kind of a mixed message. But at least they're not on the X-Mansion lawn right now. And there's not even an X-Mansion really anymore anyway. They're on Krakoa. So I guess maybe Sentinels are something a little different now that they've kind of retconned and rewritten some of the X-Men history. But for me as an old school X-Men fan, it's tough seeing the Sentinels being good guys. Uh, even though I did like that mini series, that, that Marvel Tsunami series, called sentinel where it was a little boy who finds a sentinel and has like a pet giant robot and stuff i like that series enough but um yeah i mean sentinels to me it's like they're they're autonomous robots you know they're they're good bad guys to you know beat up on for the x-men in between bigger storylines and stuff uh so i don't know uh, but seeing the stark one show up blasting their way through you know we'll see if they're effective in the next episode uh, but anyway let me know your thoughts uh, you know of all this down below i'd love to hear your thoughts 
whether you agree with me or disagree with me because I'm really liking these four issues. I, I think there's a couple little nitpick stuff in there, a couple continuity things that I feel like are wrong, but maybe one of you can correct me if I, about the hand. Uh, but overall, like for since the last dozen or so, maybe, not dozen, maybe like the last three or four major crossovers like Dark Web and uh, Extreme Carnage, like I didn't really like a lot of those. I, I really didn't. And this I found refreshing. I actually do like it. I think Miles is the underdog here. And I think the Cape Killers, as cool as that is, um, even though it's kind of a derivative story of like a Suicide Squad type thing, but I, they're out of their league too, uh, surprisingly. And, and this Cletus is unique. And I'm, I'm kind of digging on on this, at least for right now. Um, so we'll see in the next episode if, I, if they stick the landing. But for this, I thought this was a good setup and it, it brought all the characters in. And now we're at the halfway point and I can't wait to see how it ends. So we'll talk about that the next episode for sure. And then after that, we'll do Web of Carnage, the one shot, and then that'll be it for Carnage Week. But then also check out my gaming channel in the next day or two, I'm gonna be uploading Carry On, which is a video game that came out a few years ago that I've been dying to play. And I finally got around to playing it and I recorded the whole thing and I'm just gonna put it up as one long, like three hour video, uh, including the DLC over on my gaming channel without my commentary and stuff because I think it just needs to be watched. Like, it's so cool. Um, but I'll have some footage here so you can see a little bit of it here. But it's your, it's kind of like the thing, uh, you know, and, uh, and kind of that, that uh, Venom storyline, the Venom tsunami story where, it, you know, Venom breaks out in an Antarctic lab and, and starts killing everybody in the lab. That's kind of what this is, but it looks like a carnage creature. It's really neat. It's, and it keeps getting bigger the more it eats people and you're just moving it around through the lab uh, trying to escape and it's it's a really fun game and so i have my full playthrough that'll be going up on the gaming channel very soon so thank you so much for watching the show as always i really do appreciate it and again let your comments be known down below and we'll keep talking down there thanks so much see you in the future peace